Welcome everybody to another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing. Here it is February the 13th, 2023. Got a little bit of a chilly day today. It's uh, started out at 41 degrees. Gonna have a rising tide most of the day. So our plan today is uh, we're gonna start out here at this mouth of the intercoastal waterway. Try to maybe pick up a sheephead or two. And uh, then as the sun comes up and warms up, we're gonna push out onto the bay and see if we can't grab some trout or redfish. So come along, we'll see you at the first spot. All right, so what we're gonna start out with today is kind of my confidence sheep's head bait. This half ounce bird of prey jig um, with the one number one hook. And then we pinch the tail off this shrimp right here. And we're just gonna feed this hook on till we get almost to the head and then we'll pop out. That way we've got the hook shank buried and the uh, hook tip exposed. So we'll give this a first cast here. I'm assuming these rocks come out a good ways. I'd rather not get stuck right off the bat. Well, that didn't take long to lose that bird of prey in the rocks. That was evidently a little too close to the rocks. Pulling decently good. Trying to get down to the bottom again. And what do we have? Oh, black drum. Black drum. Got off. Maybe he got on film there. He was a decent one, that's for sure. All right, let's see if we can get him back on the hook. Come on, buddy. Okay, got him again, got him again. Oh, he got off again. I have had four decent hookups but I just can't get them in the boat they're down there and they're biting every time I cast out I just got to get him up to the boat come on buddy all right let's stay on the hook now Stay on the hook, buddy. All right, got the net ready. Oh, it's a little redfish. See if he's a keeper. It's got to be 18. Not sure he's going to make it. Yeah, he's just 16, but you know, nice looking redfish. Let's go ahead and get him back in the water. Come on, buddy. Okay, got him. Got him. Now let's stay on the hook. Let's stay on the hook. Stay on the hook. Let's tighten the drag just a little bit. I think it was set a little too loose. Oh, I think it's our redfish again. Okay, it's a little bit bigger. I'm not sure if he's gonna keep. Let's get a measurement on him. Definitely bigger than the other one. All right. No, he's about 16 and a half. A nice looking redfish. 
Let's go ahead and get him back in the water, see if we can't get you a bigger one. Now I've changed how I've, I'm rigging the shrimp up. You know, before I was pinching the tail and feeding the hook up on the underside. These are bigger shrimp. Um, so that's gonna be kind of hard to do with this little, with this little hook. So, so I've started using the method where you hook it in the head. Now you see where that horn, I don't know if you can see this, but where that horn meets the head, right there where that meets, um, you'll see kind of uh, a little spot in between some black marks. And if you go right between there, you know, you have a solid hard place to hook that hook. Um, it's less likely to come out um, and it'll stay, stay alive a lot longer. So um, that's kind of how I'm rigging it now with these bigger shrimp. I'd actually kind of prefer, for sheep's head anyway, a little bit smaller shrimp. But, um, you know, you kind of use what they give you at the bait store. I feel like if you have those smaller shrimp for the sheep's head and, and hook them backwards with the tail pinched off, I feel like I'd, I'd get those sheep's head on the hook a little better. Um, but right now I'm catching redfish, so, um, you know, these bigger shrimp hooked in the head should, should do nicely. That was a decent, aggressive bite. And he's not coming back, so give it another second or two and then check my shrimp. Yeah, better check the shrimp. Although it feels like it's on there. That's yeah, still on there. Still looking good. See, that's the benefit of that hooking in the head. You know, you'll, you'll have them stay on the hook a little bit longer. Just need to get one of you guys in the box. All right, so I grabbed a smaller shrimp this time. So I went ahead and pinched the tail off and uh, rigged it up backwards like that. So. Let's see if that makes any difference on getting them on the hook. Okay. Whoa, this is a good one. Well, if we can just get this one to the boat. This is a good one, y'all. We can just get him to the boat. Let's loosen our drag a little bit. I don't want to give any reason for him to get off the hook. see what it is this is a good one oh it's a big sheep's head it's a big sheep's head from what I can tell yep on the smallest shrimp isn't that funny smallest shrimp gets the biggest fish of the day Where's my third hand when I need it? Okay, y'all. This is the sheep's head of the day. My goodness. Look at this. I hope you can see this. Barely in the mouth. I mean, that is barely in the mouth. Wow. Okay, let's get this measurement on this guy. Now to measure, if you can see, you go from the fork of the tail and we've got 17. All right, y'all, look at that. 17 inch sheep's head, biggest fish of the day caught on the smallest shrimp. So let's go ahead and get him in the box and get that shrimp back out there. All right, well, let's get us another shrimp. Try to get a small one this time again. There we go, look at that. Little tiny guy. Got an otter again. Hey, Mr. Otter. He's our little buddy we see here from time to time.
He constantly puts up bubbles as he's swimming underwater. You can tell where he is. Yep, just cruising up and down the intercoastal waterway. All right, let me show you what I'm using today. This is a half ounce filler crab sheep's head jig made by Bird of Prey. Then I've got a 20 pound fluorocarbon. That's tied to 15 pound braid. This is a Daiwa BG 2500 reel. And this is a TFO seven foot six medium light fast action rod. All right, y'all. Got me a trout here. Wow. He is lively to be this cold. That's a nice trout, y'all. That's a nice trout. Look at this guy. Caught right there in the corner of the mouth. Or in that little loop of the mouth. Let's get a little measurement on him just for fun. He's got to go back. He's about 17 and a half. So nice trout, y'all. This 17 and a half inch trout kind of moved up closer to the shore, you know, a little bit uh, shallower. Um, found some grass and that kind of thing and picked up this trout. So I'm happy about that. Let me go ahead and get him in the water since we got to release him. So trout season's closed the month of February. So we had to let that guy go. But um, that was a nice trout, very nice trout. And he was quite lively to be this cold. It's water's about 58 degrees right now. So, um, you know, he was real lively in the water. So good, healthy fish. All right, what I caught that trout with, this is a three and a half inch paddle tail. This is a salt strong product, um, Fred scented paddle tail. And this is an eighth ounce uh, weedless hook. Um, so what I'm doing is I moved into this grass along the edges of this bay. I was trying to fish some deeper holes um, more towards the middle of the bay or some holes, you know, near this grass flats, but just wasn't getting anything. And uh, so I pushed up into this, um, you know, closer to the shore, as you can see, and we have some docks and things like that. Um, but mainly I think I found, you know, some grass to get into and uh, the water, you know, is still nice and, uh, nice and warm. It's 58 and a half or so degrees which is about what it was, um, you know, when I was fishing those deeper holes. So, um, you know, it just kind of just goes to show that trout, you know, like that structure, like that grass, um, as opposed to the open water, which is, uh, I kind of think where I was fishing before. So, and what I'm doing, once I kind of get set up, um, I know the wind is pushing me this way. So, um, you know, I can see that there's grass as far as I can see. There's sandbars off to the left this way. Um, I'm moving at a pretty good clip because it's a little bit windy. So, you know, I'm having to reel faster. Um, once I cast my lure in, I have to reel a little faster to, um, you know, just to compensate for the boat moving. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get this guy out here and see if we can't catch another trout. You know, this is the good area too. I don't know if it's showing up on video, but you have some sand spots. There's two right there. Um, you know, you'll come across those quite often in this bay and uh, the sandbars are off this way um, so this is just all straight grass in front of me so um, that's why I wanted to put that that weedless hook on there um, so let's hopefully we can we can grab another before we need to go in I found drifting to be a very effective way to fish um, you know as long as you have good structure out in front of you and you're going to be drifting into good areas of course but um i feel like the boat doesn't spook them as much um there tends to not be oh here we go oh i missed him so there just tends not to be as much noise i think from the boat when you drift plus obviously you cover a lot of area and uh, that can help you find fish and kind of narrow down where those fish might be so see this kind of hook has popped up a little bit. I'm going to bury, push 
forward on the lure just a little bit and kind of bury just the tip of that hook in there. But I think sometimes when you use the anchor, before I had a trolling motor and I wanted to stay in a spot like this, for instance, if I caught a fish, um, it would be tough catching the next fish after I put that anchor down. Um, and I think sometimes even the trolling motor sometimes will, will, will disturb the fish. Because um, this bay, you know, I'm sitting in three, three feet of water or so. Um, and it's pretty clear. Usually this bay is crystal clear. And, uh, you know, the slightest bit of movement, the slightest bit of visual that the fish get, um, it's going to spook them. And because it's so shallow and clear, you know, it, it, it's, it, they're easily spooked. Oh, there he is. Oh, missed him again. There's a little sand spot right there. Sometimes what these trout will do is kind of stage around these sand spots and wait for some kind of prey to go over the sand and then they'll dart out and grab it. So always fish around, through and on top of sand spots when you drift over them or near them. Yep, there's a trout right there. Doubt that went on video. But they're here. Spooky, spooky fish in this shallow, clear water. You've got to be able to cast a long way. These are 7.6 rods. Temple Fork Outfitter. Professional rods. The cool thing about them is this the rod butt right here, even though the whole length is seven and a half feet, like a lot of rods, this rod butt from the end of the reel, or from the reel to the end of the rod is shorter. So you have more length beyond the reel. Um, so that's one of the reasons I, I pick these up. Cause I know in this clear bay, I've got to cast a long way to avoid spooking the fish. There's a sand spot over there. We'll go just beyond it. And that's the good thing about this eight ounce or weedless hook. You know, it's not gonna make as much splash when it hits the water like a quarter ounce or so would. So I'm seeing some life. Obviously caught a fish, saw a trout. It's birds feeding around. It's bait fish, mid-February. So hopefully soon we can turn the page on this winter and get to some spring fishing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and head on back to the house. It's getting a little late in the day and I didn't get any other trout after that first one. So we'll see you at the house and stay tuned and we'll go over today's takeaways. All right, so back at the house, and I surely do appreciate you spending your valuable time watching this video. Before I go over today's takeaways, if you like this style of video where I give you on the water action as well as give you my tips and tricks on what I do to catch fish, then please hit that subscribe button. It's free and easy for you, but it really makes a huge impact for me. Also, leave a comment, hit that like button, and turn the notification bell on so you won't miss any of my future videos. Today's takeaway are really the three things to look for when targeting speckled trout. Number one, trout like to be comfortable, so they don't like water that's really too cold or too hot. So look for a moderate type temperature. Number two, trout like structure. So that could be seagrass, docks, oyster bars, eddies behind points, things they can get behind to ambush prey or to hide. Number three, trout like food. So look for bait fish, birds diving for fish, mullet jumping, those type of things. So if you can find those three things all together, you're gonna greatly increase your chances to find and catch fish. I hope you were able to find something useful for you today. And until next time, we'll see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.